Women Matters on the last day of January. We are united again right over the world, Africa, America, Europe in two different places. So it's always amazing to be connected in this way. So we start with a little check out, weather forecast or the weather situation, not necessarily, but when I see Haneli with a summer uh, dress, it's really so, uh, I, I'm envying you. So I give over to you for the, for the first <laughs> check in. Hello, Gertrude. <laughs> oh, you make me smile. <clears throat> we had been, I'm Haneli, I'm here in Johannesburg. And we have had been very interesting weather. Um, we have had lots of rain in the past few days. And this morning I go for a, a walk again for longer than I'm usually doing because I need to go before the sun rises for my skin, my baby skin. And this morning when I walked back, it started raining. So I was literally walking back 45 minutes in the rain, which was just beautiful. And um, Luckily, everything was covered up, so I could, you know, nothing could <clears throat> get hurt by it. But it was just such an incredible experience to be outside, number one, and to start walking again. And I have still to be very shy of the sun because it's like lethal on my skin, <clears throat> which is something I miss. Um, yeah, we have very interesting weather. When it's rain, it's really cold, which is not usual to our summer. And other days, it's extremely hot. So we have these ups and downs. And yes, life continues. So I'm glad to be here with you. I pass over to Christine from Christine King. You must unmute yourself. <laughs> I always forget that. Yeah, so thank you. Um, Speaking of healing, I've had it, um, I, normally I have a, well, for a long time, I've had a Monday morning, 11 or noon o'clock um, body work session. And so I've posted it now at 10 so I can be with us. And it was really a very, very deep session. It's a mixture of cranial sacral work and visceral manipulation and probably several other things because she's known to be the healer's healer. So she, she puts together a whole incredible mix that is who she is. And um, I didn't, ex actually with over five years with her, sometimes twice a week, but at least once a week, I've never had a session like today where I got up off the table and I was still processing. My head was working with rearranging itself deep in the middle of it, a kind of sensation I've never had before. Um, so I drove home carefully <laughs> and I'm sitting here, got here and, um, I, I wouldn't describe myself as spacey, but it, I'm glad just to be sitting in quiet with you all because driving on the highway it took a lot of attention that my brain really wasn't ready to do. Um, so yeah. Um, and I've had a really particularly active couple of weeks. I'm trying to get my book. This book has been published for oh, almost two and a half years. And uh, I didn't make the effort to put it on Amazon, but I'm working with people this week. And it's a lot of technicality, but um, it's pretty exciting. And I've got the right people helping me do it. So that's my news. It's all good news, basically, if I can just get my brain to go into Mother Earth a little bit more, that would be great. So I pass it on. Who wants what's, to take it? What's yeah. the title of the book? It's um, Choosing Compassion, the Enneagram's Nine Pathways. That's the front, that's the back, and there's 300 pages of photographs that capture the types healthy or less healthy. It's all photos. So it's a challenge for Amazon. And can we get the link? Um, it's not on Amazon yet. 
as soon as it is. <laughs> I, that would be an honor. That would be an. I, I really think I was largely motivated by when I first met Heidi to explore it because I started to realize, you know, I can send books to people in the U.S., but I can't send books to Europe or other parts unless it cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So all of a sudden that was motivation. So thanks to Heidi, that's, this is happening now. Great, great. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. So do you wanna go next? Uh, well, uh, that was not my intention, but <laughs> I could go. I'm coming out of um, um, a weekly session with the people we did the WeFlow weekend with. So most Brazilians mostly, and it's such an amazing group. It's like, there's a lot of, um, said we could rename the, the group like we glow. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's vibrant, it's, yeah, they, there are a lot of things happening, a lot of transformation just in front of our own eyes. And so it's, it's really, um, and I decided to do one myself. So facilitated as a main story, um, the 19th, 20th of February, it was like in three weeks and the woof. <laughs> so to, to get the people there and, um, yeah, so I was really like hooked with my first weekend and, and now facilitating it myself with the, the Brazilian colleague. It was, yeah, it's, it's like coming home. I felt so at ease and it was so like, um, yeah, just joyful to, to, to share that with the people and to see what what happens during the weekend and and we have eight weeks after that so i think they are unrecognizable <laughs> six weeks from now so i'm really intrigued by that and yeah and today there was this um we are about to sell our house. Actually, I've signed the contract, but he wanted to back up if I told you about this last time. And I haven't heard anything yet. So today was the session the, where the city decides if, if they accept the plans. So <laughs> I just felt like I might be rich but maybe not <laughs> in the next few weeks. Yeah, Rich, I mean, yeah, so. <sighs> Compared to what my usual income is. That's, that's the most important part. <laughs> And I want to give further to Christine in Karls, Karlstadt, Karlstadt, Karlbad. Karlsbad. Karlsbad. Um, it's been a quiet two weeks, um, spending time with my family a little bit and working and um, Tonight I am going with a friend uh, to an exhibit. I don't know if anybody else has seen it. It's called Beyond Van Gogh. And it is an immersive um, art installation that you walk through. I'm not quite sure what I'm expecting, but I know you walk through it and uh, his paintings are uh, digitally presented. Did you go to it, Henele? No. No, but I heard about it and I would love to see it too. Yeah. So um, I know it's going around cities. So, um, and then uh, sadly, a colleague uh, passed away. This is somebody who I've spent the past 25 years sharing office space with. Um, he wasn't really actually a friend, but a, a colleague. And really thinking back, it's been maybe more than 25 years. And he died 
uh, unexpectedly, he had many health challenges in the past 15 years. He and his wife have been through cancer multiple times, heart attacks, um, all kinds of illnesses, but he evidently was in a pretty good place and, and he just kind of died suddenly and they had a memorial service, uh, which I watched virtually uh, this weekend, myself and a couple of other people from our office watched it. So um, it was pretty amazing to hear his family talk about him. He had 10 children plus three step children. So that made 13. I don't know how many, I think his grandchildren were in the thirties. I don't know. Um, I know he had trouble keeping track of all of them. He admitted that. Uh, I think his wife did that for him. Um, but, you know, I used to think, gosh, you know, he had he had a profound effect on his family, really. Everybody was, he was a remarkable person. Um, but we all felt kind of badly for him because he had such a large family. He was working, you know, into his 70s uh, because I don't think he could save any money trying to raise that many uh, children and also helping them out in their adulthood with various things. So, um yeah, it, it was sad, bittersweet to hear about his life and how much he meant to everybody. So that was that was meaningful to attend that. Um, yeah, and this week, other than the uh, Van Gogh ex exhibit, I'm pretty much looking forward to more of the same. Um, Tom's doing well with his recovery from knee surgery. Um, he's doing well with that. And uh, we're just chugging along. And I will pass off to Martini. Hello, everybody. I'm very glad to share this evening with you this time because today it is our uh, 51 anniversary. Yes, and we both forgot it, but our daughter phoned and uh, I was swimming and it was beautiful. I haven't done it since a very long time and uh, I am a fish and, and yes, and um, <clears throat> I came home and Ernst, my husband, said, uh, wait a minute and he kissed me and he said congratulations and I said oh, 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 oh I've forgotten about it yeah this is reality <laughs> yeah and then we had a dinner at a fine place in Kloster Neuburg at Stift the, the um, um, how do you call it Monia Mount uh, Monastery yeah. of Kloster Neuburg. And this was beautiful. And afterwards, to sleep, and now I am here. <laughs> and uh, I am pleased to be with you and see so many faces. I give over to Beatrice. Hi, Martini. Hi, everybody. But hi, Martini. I haven't seen your face in so long. <laughs> Sorry, I have some honey on my fingers. So I need to lick it off. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm a little late. I um, had uh, my dance class this morning and the train was a little late. And it's also snowing and it's harder to, you know, trudge through the snow on the sidewalk and to take off all the layers before you come inside. So, um, but I'm here now. Um, it's been a little while. I couldn't come last time. So um, what's been going on? I um, got offered another job um, at the church that I'm a part of to help um, assist with and run the education program with the children, mostly working with the children. Um, so that's exciting. I'm starting uh, mid-February. Um, but... <laughs> Now I have <laughs> too many part-time, I'm working more than full-time. I already was working more than full-time. And now if I add on this other job, I'm really going to be working more than full-time because I have so many part-time jobs that are actually, you know, less part-time than they pretend to be. Um, 
So I have to figure out what I'm going to do about it, how I'm going to manage my time and, you know, which days of the week I'll devote to which, which jobs. And for the church job, I have to be in person two days a week. So I need to decide, dedicate two days of my week to that and everything else is a little bit more flexible. So, so that's a big thing. Um, I might be moving. That's the other big thing. Um, it's hopefully mid-March. Um, I, there's an apartment just a few blocks away from where I am right now, but I could actually sign my own lease rather than a sublet, which is where I am now. Um, so I haven't completed the application yet and there's still some paperwork to do and, you know, I need to get the final stamp of approval, but, um, if it all goes through, then I'll have a new apartment in March. Um, and what else? I am going to Florida <laughs> in a couple of days for a wedding. Um, and, and then I'm going to be visiting a friend who works, works at Disney world. So he's going to give me a tour. Um, and, and then afterwards I come back for about half a day. And then the next day I turn around and I'm going to the Dominican Republic with a family that I babysit for, um, because, uh, it's the mother's birthday and she wants to have a weekend away. It's only a couple of days, but so I'll be in the Dominican Republic with a four-year-old making sandcastles, I guess. Um, it'll be a nice change from the, from the cold here. We had a huge snowstorm the other day. Um, I think like a foot of snow or foot and a half of snow. Um, and it's still, everything is still covered. And now the sidewalks are slushy, which is not very fun, but um yeah, so I'll be going to warmer and warmer climates and then come back to the cold. Um, yeah, I think there's more than that. Oh, there's one more thing. Sorry, there's a lot of updates. I guess a lot has been changing. Um, I got invited to be a part of a project um, called the Morning Machine, M-O-U-R-I-N-G, uh, so grief and mourning. And it's a, um, they call themselves a think and do tank. So not just a think tank, but a think tank that actually makes things and and um, does some like embodied research as well. And they invited, uh, I think like eight people from different fields to come together to collectively research uh, what's going on with grief and mourning in, in the US and you know what can we do about it? What's the experience and what can we learn from it? So that's why I got invited because um, that was my thesis work. And um, yeah, it's five weeks on two hours on Sunday for five weeks. We just completed week three, um, and it's been great. And they've also they also invited me to be not only a participant in the research but also a project manager on the back end. So I'm also kind of helping to facilitate and take notes. And so that's also my other part time temporary gig job that I'm doing right now. With the two nonprofit, oh, the, oh, and the nonprofits, we opened our gallery space on Friday, um, which we've been searching for that space for over a year, and we had an opening performance on Friday. So, I'm gonna stop talking. There's a lot of updates. <laughs> There's a lot going on in my life, but um, it's all good. But it's 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 gonna wear me down eventually. And I I was sick for two weeks with a cold because I was doing too much. So I it's, it's always trying to find balance. Um, I'm going to pass to my mother. Hello, everybody. Um, congratulations, Martini. That's uh, a great achievement. And I think the fact that you forgot is actually a really good sign. It means that <laughs> means that you're not you're not anxiously counting the days and hours and <laughs> minutes. It means that you're living in an eternal bliss with your husband. So um, congratulations, that's really exciting. Um, let's see, I, I have my, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm starting my lecture series next week on Pete Mondrian and I'm really excited about that. Um, oh, he's one of your, um, your um, countrymen, Martini. Um, so it's going to be really ex an exciting um, lecture series. I haven't started the research yet, um, as usual, but <laughs> I did go to the library yesterday and check out some books. Um, I mean, uh, these things are like, like pregnancies. There's kind of a gestation. So ever since I decided I was going to give this ser lecture series 
I've, I've been thinking a lot of things. Um, and um, it's the first time I'm giving a lecture series on him. So I'm excited about that. I always like to do something new so I can learn while I'm learn while I'm lecturing. Um, and fortunately, it's going to be online. So um, because I've built up a following of, of people across the country and a couple in Europe. So, um, so it'll be, I'll be, you know, people will be able to join and, um, and I've sort of lost interest in the in-person community here anyway, ever since my mother died. So I'm really glad it's online. Um, and also I'm especially glad it's online now because I'm going to go to New York for two weeks um, in about two weeks from now. So it means that I can continue to give my lectures um, from there. So that's nice. Beatrice, Beatrice is always my tech. So she'll, she'll be in person for, that, for those. Um, I guess she'll do the first lecture in, from Disney World. Um, <laughs> um, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on here. I'm, I'm involved in a lot of courses. I'm still doing a lot of intensive um, studies in Buddhism. So that's exciting. And, um, and today for the first time, I'm going to, I mean, it's the first meeting of um, a group that's, that's in dialogue between Buddhism and Christianity. So I'm really excited about that. It's, it's, um, it's a new group formed by uh, one of my Buddhist teachers, Kyra Julingo, who was a very close, um, she, she was a, 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 a nun in Plum Village and a very close, uh, she was a protege of Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, and she lives in New York now. Um, and her partner is an Episcopal priest. And so they cooked up this idea together to have, um, to have a space where people can dialogue. So I'm really excited about that, the first meetings this afternoon. So um, I'm looking forward to that because I think it'll be very fruitful and interesting. Um, oh, and yeah, I, I went up to, to Deer Park Monastery on um, Thursday night for um, Thich Nhat Hanh's um, memorial service there. Um, of course, it wasn't like the funeral in Vietnam, but it was a really beautiful event. Um, I had been on a retreat with him up there 20 years ago and um, hadn't been there since. So it was kind of nice to close the circle. Um, and we had really, maybe I'll send you pictures by email. Um, we had a really beautiful um, candlelight procession where we walked um, through the grounds of the monastery, all carrying candles. And, and, um, and then we had a chanting service um, around the statue, statue of, um, of Quan Nin, the goddess of compassion. Um, with all the candles, we put the candles all the way around in a spiral, like to signify the, the universe. And, um, and then we, we pr processed to, down to the meditation hall, um, where there were people shared their memories of, of Thich Nhat Hanh. And one of the nuns who had been ordained that morning, because um, it was very considered very auspicious, um, there were or ordinations of nuns, I don't know why they were all nuns, not monks, but um, all over the world and all the different monasteries on the same day, on that day, Thursday. So, um, so that was kind of exciting. It turned out um, I was sitting right um, next to her. So <laughs> unbeknownst to me, she, <laughs> she was the big star of the e evening. Um, anyway, so that was just very, very special and um, beautiful. So um, yeah, that, well, I've talked way enough. We've, we've practically used up the whole session. So anyway, it's great to be here again. And um, I think everyone's, I'm sure everyone's checked in by now. Haven't they oh, or not? Monia. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, this is a check-in event. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Monia. Yeah, I'm Monia in Vienna, Austria. Uh, today is almost a new moon and my energy is very low. Uh, and I'm mostly engaged in uh, Advaita and Vedanta literature, non-duality. So there is actually not much I can talk about. And I'll probably have to see the dentist again because I feel 
there is something wrong with the tooth support. And that's about all. So I pass on to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we had a good uh, check-in tour today, but we are now up to date with everybody. Martini, congratulations again. And uh, to everybody, whoever needs to congratulate, be congratulated for anything from my heart. And especially to Hanali, which she looks like, like normal, no? After four, we, we, four weeks of the thing, what I heard you say is that you cannot go in the sun yet because the, the new skin wouldn't, uh, wouldn't um, support that. I have uh, posted the session last time which, where it was about healing. And what you are doing is almost self-feeling, you know, it's, it's using the medical measures as more, more as a facilitation or as, as a, a help to, to, to self-heal. And I was wondering if we want to continue today. I know Gertraud, you wanted to do something, but maybe we should do it when we have more time, uh, maybe next time. Can we just continue and maybe share our ideas about healing, not about illness, uh, illness, but about healing and what we, uh, what we can do for, for healing physically, but also what, what came out before of becoming whole. I mean, doesn't it uh, healing come from whole also as a word? I imagine, yeah, so. I would love to give you, Hanneli, uh, to the word to a short update and how how you continue with your practices, and then to everybody who has uh, something to share about healing, self healing, or other healing. I mean, who is a healer? How do you do that? And what is your beliefs and your perspective on that? I am putting up my video because my connection is suddenly very not not so strong. I hope you can hear me because I'm coming in and out here with internet connection. So I'm just putting my video off. Okay, we can hear you. So as you were saying that Heidi, yeah, as you were saying that there is just something happening in my body. <clears throat> it's energy, energy bubbles flowing that I can literally feel. So for me personally, healing has always been a flow of energy where there's no, no blockage, where there's no obstruction. And from an energy perspective, I can understand it completely because it's something that I studied and was trained in specifically from a physical move specifically through that blockage on all different levels we can release it. So healing for me first happened on an energetic level before it happens on the, in the physical, emotional, and mental level. And I've had incredible experiences when I went to Turkey and it was completely unexpected. It happened in 2012, I was invited to Turkey. I had a session with a man online and we were just talking and suddenly he said, what are you doing to me? And I did say, but I'm not doing anything. I'm just here with you. And he said, no, but you've done something with me. I can feel it in my body. And then he invited me over to Turkey. And then what happened there was truly also a miracle because it was completely unexpected. It was not something that I ever would have imagined. People who had all sorts of problems, whether emotional, mental, relational, doesn't matter. And something interesting started happening because every single session was different. But what was happening, for example, the one lady came in and she had breast cancer. And intuitively, everything, I didn't do anything. I was just holding the space for her and keeping the energy high in the room. And she turned herself, she healed herself through the toning. It was quite incredible because we didn't talk about it up front. I didn't explain anything to her. She was trusting. 
She couldn't speak English, so my friend was a tra translated for me. But she did everything. She just went into that space where she could connect to whatever was causing the cancer. So she went to the origin of it through visualization and meditation. And then she started through my intuitive nudge toning. And her voice, the tone changed, and I could sense into the toning's energy where there were blockages, but I didn't do anything. So I was just simply being there with her. And for me, that was quite, quite sacred. So I haven't really talked about this too much with other people. To be present to something is really holy and whole. And because it all has the same root healing. And my friend was just flabbergasted because he was translating for me for all these sessions and everyone was different. And yet I didn't promote myself as a healer, but I do believe strongly that we are all healers and we all have this ability to bring energy back into balance through whatever way is needed. And as I'm so as she was speaking, I, I just felt Oh, no, she's the more we just open to it and trust it, we'll have that ability. Sorry, did I break up again? You did, but I think we get it anyway, what you, what you said. Some words were missing, but it's okay. It's amazing, Hanali. Congratulations to you that you can do this for other people. Thank you. Are you there? I think she's gone. So let's go to somebody else uh, about healing. Who wants to share something? Um, I will. Uh, you know, people usually come to me because they feel broken or um, something drastic has changed in their life. I see a lot of people who have had injuries, um, particularly head trauma uh, and brain injuries, um, strokes and tumors and stuff. Um, and a lot of the healing is figuring out how their life has so drastically changed and often overnight um, and coming eventually to some acceptance so that they can find meaning and purpose in what's happened. Um, Monia talked about non-duality and it is often a matter of eventually getting, not seeing their body as separate from them or not seeing their what happened to them as separate from their whole um, self. So it's not, it's helping them not separate that out as something you know, other. Um, and acceptance is a big part of it, acceptance of all the feelings and all the negative thoughts and all the frustrations, um, all the negativity uh, that comes with the process of healing. Uh, it's definitely not always rainbows, that's for sure. It's, it's, a, it's a hard, hard thing to go through as uh, Hanalee, I'm sure, has uh, experienced uh, herself recently. Um, yeah, but ultimately helping people come, I think the healing comes through their own finding of their own meaning with what's happened and not keeping it separate in a separate category from, from themselves. And maybe not separate from you, Christine, that it is a cosmic um, uh, event. Um, I wrote something down. Uh, to be present is a whole, a holy thing. To be whole, and um, uh, people experience this with you. We are all wounded healer, wounded healer, and it is. Uh, then we have the empathy to the people, and this is a beautiful uh, thing that it is possible 
that um, it is uh, on on a beautiful level that these spaces and this is one space what we have in front of us that things can happen and we all um, let it happen because if it, there is no not a good climate within us um, with what we are seeing here in front of us then things cannot happen so it, it is um, uh, and the drama, what you said, Christine, um, and it is a holy thing that um, we are hurt, we are wounded, and and we think this is negative. But if we come in this non-duality, we see that it is uh, it it is uh, it belongs to life, like the clouds in the heaven. In in, on, in 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 the blue sky, you know, um, and it is so simple, but but it is it is uh, beautiful to if we are sick, if we are not um, uh, whole, that we uh, become the clarity of it, the, the the clear vision, the clarity. Um, yeah, that's, I think, uh, oh, and I am very pleased that um, you, Christine, and and um, and Victoria mentioned v uh, Vincent van Gogh and um, Piet Mondrian, beautiful people, and um, um, uh, van Gogh was also a healer. You know, his work is so holy, and I think I have seen this. Um, uh, exhibition in Holland. I, I think I have seen it. Uh, you are walking through all what he did in his life. It. Uh, I, I get a skin goose. A goose skin. <laughs> oh, thank you very much that I can be here. And, and Heidi, it is beautiful, this um, topic. It, it is just fine. Thank you. And what about you, Martini, with your pictures, with your paintings? Thank you very much. And the last one I did was Golgotha. You know what is Golgotha? It is the death and we are all afraid of the death and there is no death. And uh, I, I, I got I put in the face of the woman was first white. I didn't know how to to finish it, and and you know what, I I put the uh, um, colors of the rainbow in it, and that is the bound with God, the boundary with the, the um, um, closeness to God. So I am pleased with this, and then. I had a, in the hands a mirror, and this was the, the white light, the over light light. And uh, then I found a poem, and that is that we see this light and we will not be broken. And this is so beautiful, so powerful, you know, because we are the light. We we are born out of out of this light. And if we feel it, okay. you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want Do you to have it at hand? Can you show it to us? Yes, I wanted to tell you that I did an interview with Martini, but in uh, in German, and we went through some of the pictures she sent us lately in the last year, and it will be published in about two or three weeks, I guess. I have wow. not written anything around it, but we could also do one in 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 English, maybe using other other fo fo uh, photos, yeah, other pictures of you when we prepared before, because I used the ones we all got from her, but not not newer ones, so we could we could expand on this topic thank you and Hanneli I'm glad that you are here again you sort of had finished so it, I was glad that it was at this point and not in the middle so <laughs> and we went over to Christine and she talked about her work and her 
experience with helping people to to heal. Who else wants to come in now? Yeah, thought you are open the micro microphone. Is I a... had it open too because I thought uh, Martini talking about all the other people and doing <laughs> healing work herself. It should be acknowledged. <laughs> Um, I have to think a little bit more. Okay, so somebody else first. I was just wondering if, as Christine said, uh, helping to heal others is healing yourself. It's, you can't exclude yourself. It's by healing, helping to heal others, you heal yourself. Is what I, this is my experience. Um, yeah, I wouldn't deny that. That is certainly can be a part of it. And I think just by recognizing your own, you know, you, the therapist uses themselves as a tool, as Martini said, it's an interaction. So there is an exchange uh, between the people. However, uh, you know, a therapist doesn't want to focus on themselves and muddy their clarity of working with the client by trying to you know get too involved in what's going on for them so again there's that duality i guess we're back to duality keeping some separation um so that it doesn't bleed over into one another but yeah i think in general monia that yeah there is you know obviously um you can't keep it totally separate and and it is an interaction it is a relationship it's a relationship so yeah I can just add a few thoughts in relationship to what I've seen over about a, a decade and a half, I suppose, working with clients, helping them identify what might be the home base on the Enneagram. And that home base can show us, shine light on whether or not we are in our healthier qualities or less healthy. And so we explore ways that each person is different, but how they can move more towards their healthy qualities, which then can actually open the door to go closer to essence, getting away from personality, but living closer to our soul. And what I experience with that is their potential for health physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. If they, and it comes back to being present. Some people think the Enneagram is all about a personality system, and it's not. I mean, it's, it's played with a lot. Um, in the internet, it's pretty popular that way. Oh, how cute this is. But it really misses the point, which is about being present. When we're in our healthy qualities and in our essence, we can be in presence. And I can, for those of you who might be a little bit new to it. I could read a couple of different essence descriptions if you'd be okay with that. Just like a, a couple of phrases so we can see how different they are. But I would have to ask Heidi, is it okay if I read yours? Because we have, we've been there, done that together. <laughs> yeah. And I might ask a couple of others who I worked with or know what number, or they know what number they are. So <clears throat> the four's essence. And this, I've turned it into a poem. It was many pages in the Wisdom of the Enneagram book. And this is my poem. I receive my ever renewing, transforming true nature. I receive magical flow in the present moment. I receive precious deep contact with myself and others. I receive my soul's creative expressions. I release any need to be unique. I already am. And then there's a Rumi quote that goes with it. When you lose all sense of self, the bonds of a thousand chains will vanish. Rumi. Just to kind of feel that whole, what that feels like to be present with those beautiful qualities. I think in our group, we've got two who are, have identified themselves home base as sevens. Is that correct? I think it is. So just to give a contrast, I could read 
the seven essence, so we can see how unique it is for each one of us. Um, the seven essence, I receive joy and bring it to others. I receive ecstasy in everyday moments. I receive wonder, I'm part of the universe. I remember my life is a gift. I release distractions that interfere with this precious moment. Rumi, gratitude is the wine for the soul. Go on, get drunk. Yeah, thank you. Hanely said she is seven, and I really believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Victoria, if you don't mind me saying, Victoria also has identified herself as a seven. So you can see how each one of these is um, a place where we can go to presence, to being fully here, and then whatever kind of healing we want to receive, I suppose it becomes more accessible. Yeah, thank you. Very, very good reminder of the Enneagram. Somebody told me I'm a nine. But I don't usually trust that. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't done any deeper diving into this. Yeah, Just I, reading what that said in, in uh, Bach's book. Yeah. We could do another session on that. Were you there when we talked about the- No, the no, family? I couldn't, no. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> I couldn't, I, I really missed I'd it. I'd be happy to meet with you and we could do a Zoom session and explore it. Thank you. And, you can, and you can identify it for yourself because I think it's a little bit invasive for somebody to say, I think you're this. <laughs> and it can so I, I got it from several people. And so I said, well, could be, I don't know. <laughs> Let's check it out. Let's check it out. <laughs> and then you can decide. Yeah, it's a good start. Got a, a place where your feet are now curious. So we can just be more curious about perhaps other ones. The many perspectives on healing and on life itself. No? As integralists, we love to, to talk about the many perspectives. <laughs> Actually, when you when you're sharing this, what uh, so I never got into it very deeply, but I read a book of uh, Richard Bach, and and um, what I really loved about it that everybody heals in it in his or her own way so it's like so the the healthy nine is different from a healthy seven or a healthy four or whatever so 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 there is no better or worse thing or personality it's just just different so Absolutely. so no i really no love, yeah i loved it to 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 know that every personality has a healthy expression. So that, that, that's what I really loved about it. Yeah. And when we know that the people who are in our lives at work or at home, friends, when we know what home base is that they identify with, we can pay attention to their healthy qualities mm -hmm. and energetically mm -hmm. support them being their best self. So yeah, there are lots of there are lots of there are lots of different lenses that we can use to heal with it, depending upon our work. And yeah. From, thank you so much, Christine. <laughs> For me, um, healing has yeah. Many many years ago, I was meditating on the sofa and in our living room and all of a sudden there was this voice you are a healer and I said no I don't want to let me <laughs> so I was really like crying went to my husband and said well, I don't want to do the, that so I'm, I'm really like um, and then two two really tough things emerged where I had to support and and um, they both died. So I was like, no way I have <laughs> anything like that. And then after a while, I got that this was their path. It was not me to prevent their death. It was just to to be there for them. 
at the moment when they needed it. So, so to, so for me, from that time on, healing didn't mean that people must not die. Sometimes healing is exactly that to to fulfill their lives or to complete their lives. And I remember sitting at my father's uh, deathbed and he couldn't speak anymore. And we had some tough times and, and yeah, so I was like, I was seeing him like shaking with everything. He's so in fear, you know, like a real blue. <laughs> so uh, he knew that he would go to hell or at least purgatory. And he was really afraid of it. And and me sitting there and, and really f feeling that. So his, his, I mean, it was not fear of death, but eternal death. <laughs> so um, I felt like there is no way that I want that for him. So I, I told him all what, what I didn't, yeah. I said, okay, that happened and I, it was not okay, and the angels are waiting for you, and you're, yeah, so we take care of mom, and you go, so where, wherever, so they are waiting for you, and, and this will be not, not hell, <laughs> and I saw, he was really like shaking, and his chin was shaking, it was really like trembling, and and then he calmed down more and more. And, and then he, my brother came in. So I was not the last 20 minutes or so. I was not with him, but, but uh, the time before. And, and so for me, healing is a lot bigger than just preventing sickness or, or getting back to health. So it's, yeah. For me, that was a healing thing to, to be able to let go and just, yeah, be honest, but let go. And, and when we carried him to his grave, I could look into it and there was nothing else to say. There was no, nothing left to say. And so, yeah, to be in peace, him and me. So there was really like for me, a healing thing, a healing path. And yeah, so, so it's so, so broad, this really being whole and complete. And if that isn't the story of, of a, uh, a nine peacemaker, I don't know what is. <laughs> 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 totally, totally. <laughs> but at the same time I, I have to live the integrity of the system that we explore and, and have you at least for five minutes look at a few things and say yes I am a nine I know I am <laughs> that's 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 a that's a holy right that um, yeah you've earned I was reminded of Grace and Grit, Ken Wilber, just when you were talking that healing is more than preventing sickness because Freya was whole in her death. And yeah, it's also a beautiful book. E. Martin knows a few, any story or consideration to share with us? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know about um, healing, but I do feel like what I'm being called to do and what I have been doing is being a company.
accompanying people in their grief. I think I think feels like the right term to use to be in a, in a yeah to accompany them and to walk alongside and hold space and and I think there's been you know I've considered many times going down a psychology route as a career and have, and I got my undergrad an undergraduate degree in psychology but I never you know I had so many other passions that I've I've pursued other things um but there have been many times where I've just been with a friend or a colleague and, and they shared something that they're struggling with and I've been present with them and somehow just my presence has helped them. And sometimes, you know, I ask some key questions or offer some advice, but at the end of it, as many times people say, so at the end of the conversation, so how much do I owe you for the therapy session? <laughs> You know, that's, that's often what people say to me at the end of, end of the conversation. Um, I don't know. So that's, I think that's my answer. And through, through my art, certainly I, I try to also, you know, hold space for people's grief and to offer, but, but I don't, I don't like to presume that I, I have the ability to heal or, or to do anything in particular, I'm just going to offer with my intention, you know, offer what I have with the intention of being empathetic and compassionate and holding space. And if that happens to have an effect, you know, great, but I'm not, I'm not putting pressure on the expectation of it happening or identifying as someone who makes that happen. I think that's a lot of pressure. And I think I just try to be and see, see if, you know, sometimes, sometimes that has a, a, an effect, you know, often, you know, even performances or things that I've done, people have come up to me afterwards and shared, you know, that it completely, you know, turned something around for them in their own life, or they considered something differently because they were, you know, thinking about what I presented or because of something, some story that I shared that it somehow helped them. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Does the other Martino in the house want to <laughs> jump in? I, I just want to 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 say something about it. I think when you think a healer does anything to heal other people, <laughs> then I think that's the point missed. I I I think it's it's a healing presence that makes the difference and that's not you as a person the personal traits it it's that connection to that makes the difference and that comes in presence so so um the story i i, I said at the beginning it's it's uh, Yeah, even if I learned quite a few healing processes, healing practices, it's it 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 would it feels awkward to say I'm a healer, to because it's not who I am, but it gives access to what is healing. So whatever that might be, a uh, yeah. So 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 I honor you for for being that humble and say, okay, I know that something happening in that space. And I think you, you provide that space, not in a formal way or with a specific practice. It's interesting though, because people definitely do identify as, you know, I'm a blah, 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 and a healer, you know? <laughs> That that's a that's a title that people take on and you know claim. So I'm wondering, Hanali, you have written something in the chat while you were in the dark. Would you like to speak about it just a minute? <laughs> Are you talking about the speak to the king and the queen and the king and the queen will come out? Um this is a Scandinavian proverb that has always really gotten to me. And I, I, when I was coaching and mentoring leaders a few years ago, when they had problems with it, I used to 
challenge them to look for that whole complete self in the other person and to speak to that part of the, of the human being and then that part comes out and they all continuously said um, afterwards that it works all the time. And so when we were speaking about healing, uh, so when we, when we spoke about when somebody's ill or whatever their situation is, um, whether, it's, whether it's emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, it doesn't matter, is to just speak to the whole complete healthy part of everyone or that, that identity of them. Just look for that. And the more we do that, that will come out if it's on the soul's path. So to relating to, that's why I mentioned it in relating to healing. If when somebody's ill, not to see them as a victim, but to honor their soul's path. What, and if they do obviously ask for, for mentoring or coaching or helping or healing, what doesn't matter what comes up, but to connect to that part. And it reminds me of a shaman that was really part of my own journey. She's a, she was a, a Russian, um, Olga Kariditi. She's a Russian um, psychiatrist. And she was beginning to, in her practice, to discover that she's also a channel, that the healing happens through her. So she's not also considering herself as a healer. But she, she went in her, one of her books, she wrote, wrote about it, that whenever she was sitting with somebody, she was simply saying in her mind, you know, in her consciousness, in her awareness, saying, the love and light within me connects with the love and light within you. And it completely changed her whole practice. All her patients that came to her in as psychiatrist, something shifted. And she said there was some, there was people with severe mental problems that came to see her, obviously, because of where she was working in the hospitals that she was working in Russia. And since she started doing that, some of them could suddenly communicate with her, could really hear her, where before they couldn't. By simply using that phrase, the love and light within me sees and knows and loves the light and love within you. And like she didn't say it verbally out loud like I'm doing now, but in her mind, you know, in her awareness, she was saying that. And now it completely changed her practice. And at that time, she had many shamanic healing and things like that. And suddenly when she started doing this, everybody changed. So it was as if when she put that out there, the environment that she was practicing in as a, medic, you know, as a psychiatrist suddenly started changing because they didn't want her to see, at some stage, they didn't want her to see patients anymore because she brought in a realistic, um, more shamanic type um, you know, methods into the process. And then when you start doing that, saying those words, everything started changing. And they allowed her again to see patients in the hospital. So it was just magical. And I used to also practice with this whenever I was just having a session with somebody, whether I worked with leaders, whether I did some creativity or innovation work, it didn't matter. I, I started doing it before the session, before the workshop. And it's incredible, everything changes. So the word is also very powerful and our intentions behind it, if it comes from the heart, it just opens up hearts and minds in ways that we cannot imagine. And for me, that's also wholeness, healing, and in that sense. And that's related to that, speak to the king and queen in somebody and that king and queen will come out. Not the wounded, distorted part. Yeah. Can you write it in the chat? The words? Yeah, thank you, Hanani. Victoria, last chance to say something because we are over the hour. Um, I, I have another um, group that uh, meeting that, that starts at 10. So I, I, that's why I was invisible for a second. I was just um, checking into it so I won't be locked out. It's, a, it's an official thing. So, um, so I'm going to actually sort of linger here for a second to hear you check out if I can. But mm -hmm. I'm just going to check out and say um, thank you, everybody, and blessings. And again, um, 
all the best to everybody. You look beautiful, Hanali and Martini. Keep enjoying your beautiful marriage and everybody else blessings and uh monia i hope your tooth is better mm -hmm. and um see you next time thanks thank you yeah last not least i can share a little bit more profane thing because i have my 19 year old cat here and i try to to support her because she has problems with you know and she is always obstipated. And then I try to give her things. So I, I'm trying to do the healing on a, on a, um, let's say, physical way. I give her psyllium, and then I'm not sure if this is now right. If that's, uh, and then you know sometimes I give her medicines and I give her extra water into the mouth, and she doesn't like it. I would like to give her oil, uh, but she doesn't like it at all, and so. I'm wondering, maybe I should think about what you said and uh, try to connect with her in a different way. I haven't thought about it yet, actually. So it seems seems a little bit weird, but I, I with this cat, many years, four or five, until four or five years ago, I had a, a telepathic con um, conversation that was possible when she was on my breast and did this thing, you know, what cats do. And then I said to her, no, quiet, lie down. And after a very short time, she put her hands here and was quiet. And I, that was for many years. And I was uh, convinced that she heard me, not with the words, only with the thoughts. So I might think, thanks to this session, I might think about this again and try that and help her to, 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 to <laughs> live the rest of her days with you know, a little more ease. So thank you, ladies. I don't think we do, or shall we do a short checkout? But we, we, we always say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We say collectively thank you. <laughs> and we say in thank two you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.